the articles of faith in Islam are seven in number. They constitute belief in Allah and angels, books from God, messengers from God, the hereafter, pre-measurement of good and evil, resurrection after death. The life after death according to Islamic teaching is not a new life, but only a continuance of this life in bringing its hidden realities into life. It is a life of unlimited progress. Those who qualify themselves in this life for the progress will enter into paradise, which is another name for the said progressive life after death. As we know, as above, so below, even here in this realm, in this paradigm, we are resurrected after death because now we have the truth in us, so we're awake. Those who get their faculties stunted by their misdeeds in this life will be the denizens of hell, the hell, a life incapable of appreciating heavenly bliss and of torment in order to get themselves purged of all impurities and thus to become fit for the life of heaven as above so below. That's why we're going through torment, struggle, and test every day, brothers and sisters. A more contact him. He's like, what's up, brother? I'm moving. I said, Islam, brother, if you're moving, that means you're going to your next adept chamber. And that's true. You have new surroundings, new environment, new characters to, you know, test your, whether it's your patience and your tolerance to ignorance. Most, most important, your tolerance to ignorance. But sometimes if you show an ego, the universe will make you the ignorant one. That's what this is talking about and Noble Ali is talking about. As far as surrounding your passions, your egos and everything, man, that you think you hold dear, that you ain't taken with you at all. Only thing you're taking with you is thyself, brothers and sisters. And you better be reaching for Allah when that time comes. And throughout this whole test, it's all a test, brothers and sisters. You get it wrong this time, you may come back. But it may be as a dog, then you'll be forced to master your passions because then you won't be able to eat everything you want to eat. You'll have to be eating dog food and having to wait for someone to feed you, give you water. You're going to be sleeping on the floor and you'll be forced to master your passions. In a Zawiya convent college nestling among a grove of palm trees at Jerobub in the Libyan desert, where no European foot has trod, dwells a man who is feared by English, France, Spain, and Italy. He wields far greater power over the Mohammedan world than does the Sultan of Turkey. This man's name is Mohammed El Sanusi, El Mati. As I say, Ali is a part of Allah. So he's going to come through and give you the message over and over like he was speaking about recycling until you get the message and master your passions and your evil and negative deeds. This man's name is Muhammad El Sanusi El Mahathi. Millions of Mohammedans all over the world confidently look to him to overthrow the power of Christendom and plant the crescent above the cross all through Africa, Asia, and Europe. Sounds like uniting of Asia to me. Let's go. Sanusi is the head of the Sanusia, the greatest secret society among the Mohammedans. At the lowest estimate of British and French officers who knew something of the society, this co-fraternity numbers five million of adherents among the finest fighting races in the world. All of them are sworn to fight to the death against the Christians. Are you willing to defend your prophet to the death? Whenever Sanusi chooses to give the word. The influence of the Sanusia is felt wherever Mohammedans and Christians come in contact with each other. But up to the present time, it has been exerted on the side of peace rather than of war. Unless you're backed into the corner, brothers and sisters, like I was speaking about that tolerance. But they will back you up until the back of your head is in the corner. And then you have to smack the mm out of them. I'm telling you, only by looking death in the face, brothers and sisters, with these Europeans and these Christians. The policy of the society is to wait for decades, for centuries even, until a fair chance offers itself of overthrowing Christendom by one decisive blow how the society was founded. Although the society is known and feared by European governments, it has never attracted public attention. It works too slowly and too secretly for that. Yet it is no new thing. 
It was founded as long ago as 1830 by the grandfather of the present Mohammed el Sanusi, who bore the same name. The man who was descended from the prophet, oh, well then that's Ali, because Nobuja Ali said back when he was Mohammed, and all of these prophets come through the same bloodline. Descended from the prophet, lived at Fez in Morocco, that's Moorish, and became famous for his piety. Like a good Mohammedan, he made pilgrimages to Mecca and other holy shrines, and then established a Zawiya in Alexandria, Egypt. He has a sort of Mohammedan Luther, who denounced the folly and sin of the mullahs, well, that's Ali Molalo, and dervishes. He suffered the usual fate of the reformers. The Sheikh el-Islam at Cairo excommunicated him, and he fled for his life across the Libyan desert. After many wanderings, he settled at Jerobub, a spot northwest of the oasis of Siwa. Here he established another Zawiya, and very soon gathered together thousands of students and followers from the fanatical Muslim tribes of northern and central Africa. But see also, as far as them saying the fanatical Muslims, you know, Mola, Ali Mola was known as a fanatical. He was one of the tribes that was raining to the mountains and they was trying to push him out of the Holy Land and they was calling them rebels, but they was trying to defend their birthright. He preached pure, austere doctrines, which appealed to their intensely religious spirit as the doctrines of the covenant appealed to the Scots in the days of Cloverhouse. Above all, he preached hatred of the Christians and the duty of rising in a jihad holy war against them when the signal was given. In the course of years, hundreds of sanctuaries of the Sanusias were established in the principal Mohammedan centers between Morocco and Mecca. We'll say that again. In the course of years, hundreds of sanctuaries, hundreds of sanctuaries of the Sanusia were established in the principal Mohammedan centers between Morocco and Mecca. Agents were appointed to enroll adherents. In every part of Islam, missionaries were sent far and wide, and the co-fraternity was organized on a worldwide scale, a rich war chest. But this was not all Sanusi. The first began to accumulate a war chest and an armory. The Sultan of the Interior and the Sheiks of the Bedouin tribes of the desert sent him valuable caravans of ivory, ostrich feathers, and gold. Thousands of pilgrims from Bornan, the Saharan provinces, Morocco, Egypt, Arabia, and elsewhere brought him treasures. A large part of the funds thus raised was spent in buying cargoes of arms and ammunition, which were imported through the unknown, unfrequented harbors of the Tripoli coast to the big town which has sprung up around the Zawiya in the Jerbub oasis. The rest of the money was spent in maintaining the propaganda as Noble Drali said, them newspapers, they're your only hope, or forming the nucleus of a war fund. For 30 years, Sanusi, the first, worked and waited. Then he died without seeing the fruits of his labor. He was succeeded in 1860 by his son, a man of even greater organizing genius. Under his rule, the Sanusia became yearly more powerful. Vast quantities of the modern arms were imported to the oasis and millions of the brothers of the co-fraternity were enrolled. Yet he made no move. The time to strike, he told his impatient followers, had not yet arrived. And true indeed, brothers and sisters, because who guides this movement? Allah guides this movement. And I told you, it's going to be a, a divine happening. It was feared that he would proclaim a holy war in November 1882, a very sacred occasion to Islam as it was the beginning of the 14th century of Hegera. It was feared, too, that he would ally himself with the Mahdi and the Khalifa. And that Khalifa, that's what Noble Drew Ali, that's the bloodline, the Khalifa, that's the succession. They sent embassies begging him to do so, but he contemptuously refused, calling them impostors and mountbanks. Sanusi II died a year or two ago. Like his father, he saw no result from his work. His son now reigns and apparently means to pursue the same waiting policy. You gotta have action though, brothers and sisters. Like Noble Drali said, we must see results. Nobody can say when the vast power of Sanusi will be launched against Christendom. Members of the Sanusi say that they intend to wait until England and France are at war and then strike at Egypt and Algeria simultaneously. 
Sanusi's emissaries everywhere. Nobody familiar with the inner life of Islam in Africa can doubt for one moment the power and extent of the co-fraternity. Its emissaries are to be found everywhere. They are always treated with the profoundest reverence, as if they were direct messengers from heaven. In Morocco, Tunis, Algeria, Tripoli, Egypt, Nubia, the Sudan, and the Saharan provinces, Sanusi is all-powerful. His followers greet one another by an elaborate system of signs and passwords, like masons. Two Arabs, strangers to each other, will meet in a desert. As they smoke the chabak together, one will casually draw a geometrical figure on the sand with his finger. The other will invariably respond by adding a few lines to the figure and whispering a word. Immediately they become brothers, for both are members of the Senusia. The intelligent departments of the British and French war offices have done their best to get detailed information about the Senusia. Get up out of their business, man. Quit trying to enter and interfere with foreign affairs get up out of their business let them do their divinations in the sand trying to study people all the time they know that the british troops in egypt and the french in algeria must bear the brunt for the first attack when the jihad is proclaimed but though the officials fill their pigeonholes with rumors and reports all showing the power of sanusi they can get nothing definite no european has ever succeeded in reaching jerobub though many have tried Rohif's, Nectegal, Duveyir, well-known explorers of North Africa and others were turned back by agents of the Senusia and threatened with death if they advanced farther. Some never returned. The secrets of the co-fraternity have never been betrayed. The Bedouin tribes of Algeria say the Senusi and his lieutenants possess marvelous psychic powers. They can read all the thoughts of men, detect treachery even before it is fully developed in a man's mind, and strike the traitor dead by their power as he goes to sell his knowledge. Islam. Why England and France are frightened. <laughs> I bet. What frightens England and France most of all is that the Senusia have recently begun a vigorous propaganda among the Mohammedan troops. What is that? They give out the truth and then people start seeing the BS that they're pushing and supporting and assisting. Who garrison their African possessions. British officers in Uganda, Somaliland, Egypt, Nigeria report that they have good reason to believe that the most of their men have joined the Senusia and cannot be relied upon in time of need. The French officials in Algeria, Dahomey, and French Congo say the same. When will the blow be struck? What will be the result of these vast preparations, which have been going on ever since 1830? Will there be a repetition of the old struggle between the cross and the crescent, a struggle which drenched Europe with blood of centuries? Undoubtedly, Sanusi controls a mighty military machine. The army at his command is far greater in point of numbers than that established by the Caesar of Russia. The extent of the army at Jerobub is unknown, but it certainly contains large quantities of up-to-date rifles, field pieces, and ammunition, which are constantly being added to. As for money, the wealth of the Mohammedan world is practically at Sanusi's command. Money, life, will, comfort, all are given up when a man joins the Senusia, an African Mohammedan empire, which is the Moorish empire, brothers and sisters. It was impossible that Islam should conquer Europe, however careful and vast the preparations. But it is conceivable that the Senusia might drive the French out of Algeria, the English out of Egypt, and Central Africa, and then found an immense Mohammedan empire covering practically the whole of Africa north of the equator. Throughout the vast region, Mohammedanism, as represented by the Senusia, is the dominant faith. Even the pagan Negro tribes of the western Sudan are being converted to Mohammedanism. When Allah chose the time for the keys to be loosened and released, all the world within universe was getting this hot and truth from Allah. So we in August is Moorish American Month, August 2023, brothers and sisters. But we do this every day, every week, every month, every year. 
We live this, brothers and sisters. We always study and keeping our minds spinning and turning and always thinking, brothers and sisters, so we can receive that art sent from Allah. Indeed, as a thought. Noble Ali told you to think. So if you think, you get a thought. So he wanted you to be your own prophet for yourself and save yourself. He told you to think. And what does a prophet do? Get a thought from Allah. So he told you to think. He told you to be your own prophet. He said the priesthood is dead. You got to go among your own self. Go alone and lay your offering upon the shrine of Allah. And you put your hand in Allah's hand and know all is well. So the conclusion to the Sanusi secret society, all these brothers were scattered all throughout the world and they had these keys. And none of these brothers spoke the same languages, but all the truth was the same throughout all the different tongues. But in regards to the Europeans trying to investigate and find out what they was doing and studying, they was trying to do that to counter it. Where it spoke of the Sanusi being in opposition with Ali Mola and the dervishes. I don't know about all that because I know like the brother Boaz, he sent Uncle Buzz. He sent me the message in regards to the Crescent of Somerset. And then he sent me the link to the Emory or the Embry, the UNES Embry or the UNES Emory. It's on YouTube and it has scenes in regards to the dervishes having these different temples. And they was kind of secret about it, you know, within themselves. Nonetheless, they were speaking about, you know, the dervishes in here. But the Sanusia was also known as, you know, keeping their keys secret. But they was just preserving because a lot of them other opposition, man, they didn't want this truth out. As you see in Islamism, the truth spreads everywhere. When most people hear the truth, if their ancestors was of good vibration, they are who they are, you know, then and now. So the good's going to get the truth and take it in and it's going to spread. But to those that look at you with them deer in the headlight eyes when you're telling them truth and they're not getting none of it. They are who their ancestors was, some dumb ass people. But it is what it is. Noble Drali said if they ain't going to listen, they ain't going to do what they're going to do. They just going to die. So it is what it is. And they're going to regenerate like I was talking about with the dog, man. Y'all going to be chasing your tail. But yeah, in regards to the crest of Somerset, in one of the scenes, it had one of their temples. And out in front of the door above it, it had the crest of Somerset. But it reminded me of the Masonic temples where they got the compass and square sitting outside the door. So it kind of reminded me of that. Islam, divine honors to Prophet Noble Jirali and the Moorish Divine and National Movement of the World. We got another one in, brothers and sisters, for Moorish American Month 2023. Islam, fezzes up, brothers and sisters.